Hi everybody, welcome back. So in this video I'm going to talk about a, uh, a topic that I think is probably pretty familiar to anybody who's been on forums and uh, sees the, the questions that folks that are new to this ask. So that is, what is the right distribution to use? What version of Linux should I be using? Uh, and if it's what version of Linux you should be using, I go with uh, 2.6. No. <laughs> That's ancient by these standards. Um, no, we, um, we're we basically looking at like what, what distribution of Linux should you, should you start off with. So let me go jump over to my little silly presentation thing, and uh, we'll go ahead and, and walk through it. So the uh, the first thing uh, I think that's worth worth noting is is it doesn't really actually matter. The version of Linux that you use doesn't matter. Um, you just want to get an understanding of how the system works, how it's designed, how it's built. Um, the package managers will be different. Who cares? Um, if you know apt, you can figure out yum, and if you can figure out yum, you can figure out DNF, and if you can figure out DNF, you can figure out you know, zipper, uh, whatever you want to go use. So it doesn't matter. doesn't matter at all. Um, but there's, there's three sort of general main categories that I think you want to look at. If you're going to this from the perspective of, of not just like, I want to play with Linux, but instead as somebody who wants to be a Linux administrator or a sysadmin, uh, who does Linux stuff, uh, or somebody getting into site reliable engineering uh, or DevOps stuff. Um, there's three sort of main categories that you you want to you want to go look at, or three main possibilities that you want to look at. Um, the first one is Ubuntu. Um, Ubuntu is very 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 widely used. Um, it is probably the most common distribution. Um, that's fallen off a little bit in the, the, the recent years, but it's, it's still very, very popular. And if you go look at, you know, Amazon and, and other cloud providers, it's usually one of the default uh, options that you, you have. Um, that's based on Debian. So I think if you want to do Debian instead, that's, that's completely fine. Um, I'm, I, I think basically anything within a certain tree, I, I'm going to group together, right? So like uh, like Red Hat, for example, CentOS, fine, right? Um, you know, uh, Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, right? All the derivatives. We'll, we'll sort of categorize them some generally together. So the uh, the second option I just I just mentioned, which is Red Hat based uh, distros. So in the enterprise, uh, Red Hat is probably the um, the primary distribution. Um, that's mainly because of uh, the nature of support. Uh, so Canonical has some options around support, um, but if you look at Red Hat and what they do, they, they really sort of push that. <clears throat> They're also very early on, so there's a lot of people that are, are very familiar with, with Red Hat. Um, so if you're starting off, uh, don't pay money for this. You start off with like CentOS, uh, CentOS or, or like Fedora, uh, but for your, your system stuff, your server stuff, probably uh, use, uh, use CentOS. Uh, and then the third one is going to be SUSE, uh, or SUSE, uh, or SUS, or however you want to go say it. Uh, officially, it's SUSE, uh, but however you want to go do it. And, and probably open uh, SUSE, uh, especially. And I think that's probably what I would recommend people use. Um, now, I'm, I'm kind of being aware of my own bias here because... Uh, if you look sort of down below, there's a, a link to um, my website with training. And if you go on there, you'll see that one of the, the training options that I provide is uh, SUSE Enterprise Linux training for the admin uh, certification as well as the engineer certification. So uh, if that's something you want to look at, awesome. Um, but I feel a little bit biased saying SUSE. But I think that's that's the the third option that I would I would suggest, and probably the one that I would recommend. Now, why do I say that? For me, I think it's it's really important when I'm trying something new to make it as easy as possible. Um, I, I I'm out of shape now, 
<laughs> It'll happen to you too if you're a Lynx admin. Uh, but I'm, I'm out of shape now, but I, I used to be in, in fairly decent shape and I would go to the gym every day. Um, I'd go to the gym every day. Now, <clears throat> I had a, a, a deal with myself where if I was feeling tired or if I was feeling sick and, you know, I just didn't want to work out that day, I was allowed not to work out. Uh, I didn't have to get on a machine. I didn't need to go run on the, the elliptical. I didn't need to lift any weights. Um, but I had to go to the gym. So my deal was is I would take my gym clothes, put them in my gym bag. I would go to the gym. I'd go up the flight of stairs, jump on the elevator, go to the, uh, the gym, get out. And if at that point I still felt like I didn't want to work out, like I was tired or I was feeling sick, okay, turn around, go home. Completely fine. No guilt, no worries. Um, but what happened was is a lot of the time I'd end up working out. And the reason why is because it was a very low barrier of entry. I didn't need to, you know, um, I, 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 my, my rule wasn't like, oh, you need to do, um, you know, at least three sets of deadlifts, right? That wasn't, <laughs> no, it's just, you got to go there. And if you turn around and you leave that, that's, that's fine. So it was really easy. And because of that, for a very long time, I stuck with that habit. And, um, I think that's, that's really useful when you're taking on a new skill, um, so I think regardless of whether you sent OS Ubuntu or SUSE, it's going to be fairly easy. Um, but there's a really great utility um, that ships by default with both the, the enterprise version of SUSE and the, the free version of SUSE, which is YAST. Uh, and YAST stands for Yet Another Setup Tool uh, or System Tool. People name it. It's an acronym. Uh, and that's open source, so people call it whatever they want. Uh, I learned it as yet another setup tool. And it's a menu-driven um, system. You can run this on the command line. You can go run this on the uh, the GUI if you have a GUI installed. And it allows you basically a management front end, a graphical management front end to go configure your system, set up your networking stuff, install packages, um, modify common configurations, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so for a new user, it makes it really easy. Um, and it's something that you can find in a lot of big environments, enterprise environments. If you, you know, if you're in an environment where they do uh, SAP, there's a good chance that they're doing SUSE. Um, it's in a lot of banks and a lot of different big organizations, stuff like that. <clears throat> so it's, it's, it's relevant and it's really easy to start off with. So I think those are, those are the three kind of main ones that I would, I would look at. Um, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. Um, bash is going to be bash. Um, LSOF is going to be LSOF. Uh, you're going to do the same options on the PS command, uh, when you're looking at, at processes, really the differences are pretty minimal. And if you feel like, man, Manjaro looks really cool. I want to play around with that. Play around with Manjaro, whatever you want to do. If you like mint, go use mint, whatever. It's all Linux. Um, the main thing that I would, I would recommend that you do is if you're somebody who's new to this, um, have it on your desktop, right? Have it on your laptop, run that as your daily driver. Um, it's going to, to make you play around with this stuff a lot. Um, you know, for me, I've been doing this for a long time on my, my desktop that I have right here. I have a, a Windows 10 machine. A lot of that's just driven by the biggest client that I have requires that I do a lot of classes via WebEx. Uh, and you can use WebEx as a client with Linux, but it's really clunky on, um, you know, uh, as a presentation tool. Sorry about that. Suspected spam color. Yay. So, yeah. Um, I forget what I was thinking. So... <laughs> I'm not doing this whole video over, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to, if you want to play with, uh, you know, some other distribution, play with other distribution. That that's that's great. Um, have fun with this. Put it on your laptop. Do that kind of stuff. Uh, I was just mentioning that I I use you know Windows as my desktop because uh, my main client um, uses it. But also, I'm kind of doing the same thing in reverse. Uh, despite the fact that I worked in Microsoft for for a few years, 
Um, my experience with Windows is significantly less than with Linux. And I think it's useful for me to, to, to know Windows, right? So I may not manage, uh, you know, big AD environments very often, things like that, but it's useful for me to have a, you know, familiarity with, with what it looks like. So make it easy. Um, pick a distribution that's going to, you know, help you, help you be comfortable with this. Um, and pick it up and then, and, and, but, but have something that you can play with, have it on your, your laptop or your desktop, um, installed on servers and VMs and things like that. And, and, you know, um, yeah, just do it. So the other option that I, I kind of want to point out, and this is, this is one that may or may not apply to, uh, to you. And it's certainly not something I would recommend if you were brand new, uh, to Unix, but if you're somebody who's been playing with this for a little while, um, but you're still fairly new. You don't have a lot of experience with, with Linux, uh, but maybe you get like a year or so. And um, you're, you're looking to, to kind of maybe further your career uh, or, you know, make a more serious transition once you already have some basic knowledge there. Um, FreeBSD. Um, so FreeBSD obviously is not Linux. It's, it's a BSD Unix, but it's Unix. Um, and... <clears throat> There are going to be a lot of things that are different, but there's going to be a lot of things that are going to be the same. Um, I also think that the BSD at this point adheres to Unix philosophy stuff better than Linux does. Um, now, I'm not saying that you use it exclusively or that you know that's the that's the main thing, but it's going to be doing a lot less handholding than modern versions of Linux. Um, you know, setting up X11, setting up the, the desktop. Um, you have ports um, that are available. You can use package command much like you would yeah, a yum or an apt. Uh, but there's also a ports tree uh, where you CD user local uh, and then you go into the, the ports and then there's various different packages where you compile them from source similar to like a Gen 2. Uh, in fact, that's kind of where Gen 2 got, the, uh, got their sort of idea. Um, but it's a lot less hand-holding. And I think there's also another benefit that I may talk about a little bit more down the road, but I think it's I think it's an interesting thing to have on a resume, right? You also want to have Linux on your resume. Don't just exclusively use FreeBSD. But if you're a hiring manager, right, and you've got 50 different resumes from people that are all showing basically the same kind of stuff, um, you've got, you know, CentOS and you've got some Ubuntu experience and some SUSE, you know, here and there. And eh, it's Linux, it's Linux. Uh, and then, oh, yeah, I set up a LAMP stack and Apache and played with Docker. And, you know, it's basically seeing the same bullet points on uh, on the system. Uh, and then you see something that's kind of unexpected. You know, you FreeBSD, AIX, something like that uh, on a resume. It's going to be... It's going to make you wonder, like, all right, that's interesting. Most new Unix admins aren't really Unix admins. They're Linux admins, and they only have experience with Linux. But this guy's got FreeBSD experience. Probably knows ZFS. Probably uses it because he's got some opinions about Linux, which means he knows enough about it to have some opinions on Linux, whether or not you agree with those opinions. But uh, that's kind of interesting. Um, I think it's a good strategy on a resume, uh, if you're looking for jobs, to have have a thing in there that doesn't quite fit. You know, If you're putting together a, a resume as a software developer, um, throw in Pascal. I mean, don't do it if you don't know Pascal, but like, you know, throw in Pascal. Um, throw in COBOL or something. And people are going to be like, whoa, I was expecting Go and Python just like everybody. <laughs> but now you get this sort of twist on it. It builds some, you know, let's let's kind of let's have a conversation with this guy. Let's talk, let's talk to them. So I think FreeBSD would be a really interesting option. Um, also, I just really like FreeBSD. It's a little bit different and a little bit weird and in a good way. Um, you know, there's, <clears throat> you know, there's, yeah, there's a lot of cool things. It, you don't hear about it as much uh, because with the licensing for BSD, it means that if a company decides to go use it and it's successful, they change the name, 
right? <laughs> so uh, one of the big things that I teach a lot of is NetApp. Uh, and NetApp for years and years and years and years and years has been running on top of BSD, right? So they don't have uh, a Linux kernel because they make a lot of kernel level changes uh, for how they implement NFS. Uh, and if they did that with Linux, they'd have to give that code back. Uh, but with BSD, they get to keep it. Um, if you look at, uh, you know, uh, Apple's uh, OS 10, right? That's BSD. Uh, you know, the, the top layers are completely different, but under the hood, that's BSD Unix, uh, forked from uh, uh, from FreeBSD to become Darwin, which in turn became, uh, you know, OS 10. So it's, it's a lot of people are using it, but it's kind of behind the scenes. And I, I think it's a pretty interesting one. Um, so consider it. Add it to the add it to the list. So, in summary, use whatever the hell you want, <laughs> uh, even if it's just you know your Windows uh, you know system, and you can go ahead and install the you know the 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 Unix subsystem uh, for for Windows, whatever they're calling it, um, and and you're doing that. That's great, right? I mean, that's a step in the right direction. Um, if it allows you to go ahead and use this stuff regularly, that's really what it is. It's building up the miles. Uh, getting the mileage, getting the experience with with seeing things break and, and, and figuring out how to go fix them. That's really where the experience comes in. It's not what particular distribution you use. Um, but if you do use a, a particular distribution, um, you know, one of the things I think is, is useful is to be, be prepared to talk about why you picked that distribution over another one uh, in, in an interview. So anyway, thank you so much for, for watching the video. Um, you know, just like with the the previous ones, I'm I'm still, you know, uh, blown away by how nice you guys are and and how supportive you've been. So thank you so much for, you know, subscribing and liking and um, all the the amazing stuff. Uh, if you haven't uh, subscribed already and you like these videos, you know, feel free to to click the button. If you don't, no worries, I don't mind. Um, but it's it's certainly cool <laughs> to see that. Just the you know the likes and the comments and the uh, the conversations on on both YouTube and Reddit have been a uh, uh, have been fantastic. So thank you guys for for watching another video. Um, please let me know what you find useful. If this is going in the right direction, if you have any particular questions, things like that, uh, just give me a shout, and I would uh, I'd love to to hear more. So uh, so thank you so much, uh, and I'll see you in another video down the uh, down the road. <laughs>